Welcome to Type C Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Cooler Master Tempest GP27Q. Have an 80 point during the video. You want to check out this exact same monitor through some Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's jump into it. Right off the bat, this is a 27 inch gaming monitor with a resolution of 2560 by 1440p. Now this brings the PPI or pixels per inch, essentially how crisp and clear the image on screen is going to appear to your eye. This brings it to about 109. Now this is a good PPI where images, games, movies are gonna appear very crisp and clear. Now, when you do get very small text, there is gonna be noticeable pixelation, really depending on how close you sit to your monitor. If you sit a little bit farther back, you're not gonna really notice any pixelation. If you sit a little bit closer, you probably will. But again, slight pixelation. Now the panel type here is a big deal. This uses an IPS or in-plane switching panel. Now, not only that, but it's lit with mini LEDs, which means that allows it to have very good local dimming, which is a huge deal with this monitor. As well as that, this also has a quantum dot layer helping out those colors. And right off the bat, I'm just gonna say this. This is one of the best budget monitors out there. I wouldn't necessarily call this budget due to its price point, but it's definitely not expensive. And for everything that you get, I think it's budget for all the features. Now, before we move on, Cooler Master also makes the GP27U, which is the 4K variant of this panel. Almost everything is identical, except that it is a 4K variant. I will also be doing a full review and an unboxing on that monitor coming soon. But let's talk refresh rate and variable refresh rate. Typically on most monitors, this is boring. On this one, well, it is not. No, this hits 165 Hertz natively and has FreeSync and G-Sync compatibility. Now the G-Sync compatibility is not NVIDIA certified G-Sync compatibility, but it does work well with G-Sync. However, the problem here is that it seems that it's not FreeSync Premium Pro. Now there's not a whole lot of specs out. I couldn't even see if this does have FreeSync Premium Pro. But the main point is that I was unable to enable FreeSync or G-Sync compatibility. I was unable to do variable refresh rate with HDR on, which means it probably does not have FreeSync Premium Pro. Although in their marketing, it says that you can have variable refresh rate on with HDR. So maybe that's something that I'm doing wrong, although I don't think so. It just looks like this doesn't have FreeSync Premium Pro. Not only this, but in SDR, with local dimming on, it seems that you cannot have variable refresh rate on at the same time. So that's kind of a bummer because most of the time if you're buying this monitor, you are going to have local dimming on. So that being said, in both HDR and SDR with local dimming on and variable refresh rate off, I didn't experience any screen tearing, so that's still good. Okay, moving on to brightness, HDR, and local dimming, the biggest section of the video. We got a lot to cover, but it's exciting stuff. Firstly, in SDR, so non-HDR, and without local dimming on, this monitor has a rating of 600 nits, which that's a lot of brightness in SDR without local dimming on. But after testing, this hits a little bit lower than that at around 520 to 530 nits. Now that's still extremely good for most monitors. If it's hitting in that range, that's pretty much like pretty much maxed out. Even incredibly expensive monitors, pretty much max out there, uh, except in HDR. However, stuff gets crazy when in SDR with local dimming set to high, it gets nuts, hitting a peak brightness in a 100% window. So get that 100% window, not highlights. This thing's pushing well over 1100 nits of brightness. 100% window, full screen brightness. 1100 nits. This thing is insanely bright. Now talking local dimming, this has 576 zones using that mini LED goodness to produce all of those zones. Love it. Now this makes this way better than a VA panel. Like just across the board. This is better than a VA panel, 100%. This is really competing now with OLEDs. And I know some people might not like me saying that, but use the monitor and you'll agree with me. However, talking about the local dimming, there are some issues. Now, the big one is with local dimming turned on in SDR, not in HDR, but in SDR, some areas of the screen will get blown out. Now, this is less of a problem in game, especially if you're just in it to, you know, look at a beautiful image that's super contrasty, not really that big of an issue. So gaming with local dimming on in SDR is great overall. But on the desktop, it's pretty much a no-go. So there's some monitors where you can have local dimming on 100% of the time um, and you're just using them. Not this one, that's probably not gonna happen. I switched this into just SDR, no local dimming, no HDR, 
on desktop use. Um, but then in game, I'm gonna switch into SDR with local dimming on or sw switch into HDR with local dimming on. But like I said, this is not the same story in HDR. HDR does not have those overly blown out areas of the screen. You could potentially, well, I guess you definitely could uh, have this in HDR with local dimming on and use anything on the desktop and it would look pretty normal, obviously. More obviously contrasty and hdr -y goodness, but it does not blow stuff out. So if you want the most accurate representation with local dimming on, you're gonna have to be in HDR. Now in HDR, this doesn't have that crazy 1100 nits. Maybe in the peak brightness, but not 100% window. This is heading closer to about 540 to 550 nits in HDR with local dimming on. That is still a fantastic brightness. And honestly, 1100 nits, well, it might hurt your eyes over time. So 540 nits is a lot of brightness still. This is fantastic. I can't tell you how good the local dimming is. Is it perfect? No, right? There's a few little things, like it's not quite as quick as other companies' local dimming that I've seen, but it's so damn good. It's it's just close enough. I mean, I could go through and nitpick every little thing, but honestly, the, the point here is that during gameplay, during movies, anything. It's freaking stunning. All right, but let's move on to colors. This covers 99% of the Adobe RGB color gamut and 98% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. Accuracy out of the box is good. This is factory calibrated from Cooler Master, which is great. So uh, if you're just gonna be gaming uh, and you're kind of worried, oh, the white tone's gonna be correct or, or most of the stuff, is it gonna look weird? Some gaming monitors have big problems with that. This isn't, this looks great out of the box. Now, if you're gonna do photo and video editing, I would probably calibrate it yourself. The standard picture mode, at least for mine, although they should be fairly similar as uh, they do factory calibrate them, but there are bound to be differences, even if they're just slight. My personal monitor, the standard colorway, was not quite as accurate as user one color profile. So I have left this in user one most of the time. So if you were gonna be doing professional work and gaming most of the day, I would probably, uh, definitely, I would calibrate this yourself. However, for 99% of people buying this, it's very good, you're not gonna need to touch this at all. Colors are vibrant, they're beautiful. White tones are incredibly accurate, which was very good. This is exactly what you want out of a gaming monitor that comes pre-calibrated from the factory. And as well, this can output 10 bits of color at full 165 hertz. But let's move on to contrast ratio. Now, natively, this hits a 1000 to one contrast ratio. This is an IPS panel, but like we know, that local dimming changes things, well, a lot. It changes things a lot. Now, with local dimming on, Cooler Master claims a 50,000 to one contrast ratio. And honestly, I don't think that's too far off. That's probably very close to what it is. A VA panel, vertical alignment panels compared to an OLED uh, and a typical IPS, it typically goes IPS, the blacks are gonna be a kind of blue hue, right? It's not black. VA panels definitely get a deeper black uh, and then OLEDs are just black, as black as you can possibly get. So if you have an experience with VA panels, they have about a 3,000 to one to 6,000 to one contrast ratio. There are definitely outliers out there that do even more than that, but that's pretty much your typical range. So this is 50,000 to one. This has way deeper blacks than a VA panel. So if you have experience with a VA panel and like, oh, that's nice blacks, this has better blacks than that with the local dimming on. As far as user experience when gaming, because there's so many zones, this is more comparable to an OLED than it is a VA panel. And honestly, the overall consumer user experience is very similar. Now there's going to be people out there that are like heavy enthusiasts that are just gonna be like OLED, 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 and that's fine, but you're missing the point here of OLED burning in and degrading over time really no matter what you do. Those panels degrade over time and an IPS panel is just gonna be as reliable as it gets then with mini LEDs man, you're having blacks that are really close to an OLED and you'd be able to keep this panel for 10 plus years without any burning, never having to worry about it. Oh, it's on. Oh, there's an image there. No problem. So that's one of the things I absolutely love about this. As well, my unit had absolutely no backlight bleed, which we do expect. All right, now response time, ghosting and input lag. Firstly, Cooler Master claims a two millisecond gray to gray response time. And well, that's probably not correct. That's probably exaggerated a little bit, but that doesn't really matter. How does it translate into ghosting? And well, it's extremely low. I mean, it's crystal clear. Not only that, but this has the single best implementation of ghosting response time settings, essentially. Let me explain it. So they have like four or five different response time settings, which would be like fast, faster, or whatever. 
that doesn't matter. Because the one thing that they have is a zero to 100 in units of one. Can you change the ghosting tuning? Literally in the menu system, you click it up one, you immediately see the change. You can literally tune your own ghosting a hundred different ways. This is the single best implementation of any type of ghosting tuning ever done that I've ever seen. I've never seen that on any other kind of monitor. This needs to be in every single monitor on planet Earth. I don't care if it's a office monitor or a gaming monitor. This is unbelievably good. You can literally go from, okay, there's more ghosting, there's more ghosting, not very much ghosting. Oh, that's inverse ghosting now. So you can literally find the absolute best tune or very, very close to the best tune uh, by going through the menu system yourself. That's freaking unbelievable. Now as for input lag, there's not a whole lot to talk about. It's extremely low. It's what you would expect from a gaming monitor of this caliber. You're not gonna have any problem with this. All right, but now the menu system and controls. I expected Cooler Master to get this wrong, honestly, and they just didn't. This is controlled with a single joystick on the left side, but it's not on the left side over like this. It's on the left side under. You can actually reach it both ways, but it's easier to reach it under. This is good because if you have a dual monitor setup, you can still access the menu system controls, which is great. Now to turn this on and off, you hold it in or click it in to turn it on or off. That's how you do it. And then you just use it with a joystick. Now, one of the things that I love is there is no like quick menu. Uh, that's what a lot of monitors do. They have a quick menu and then you go to the full menu. This one, you click it and you're just in the menu. And honestly, the quick menu is kind of ridiculous because it, it doesn't make it quicker. It makes it slower. Uh, so that's actually a faster way to do it at this point. You click it and you're right into the menu system. I like that. Everything is easy to find. Everything is incredibly well labeled. I mean, there's literally no problems. Functionality is basically perfect. This is as good as the LG's menu system as far as functionality. As far as how pretty it is, it's pixelated. It's purple, so it still matches the theme, but it's not pretty at all. I mean, yeah, it does not have those gorgeous graphics that LGs have that basically look like the infotainment of a Mercedes Benz, but it's extremely functional, so this gets a full pass. All right, now for VESA compatibility, this is fully compatible with VESA compatibility 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter VESA mounts. If you want to mount this, you should, because we're going to talk about the standard build quality, which is Man, it's just not my favorite out there. It's good, but we'll get to that. All right, internal speakers. This has, I believe, two two watt internal speakers and they suck, like so bad, they suck. They get loudish, but they remind me of early Apple wired earbuds that I would set down on my table, turn it up to 100% volume, and then listen to my earbuds like they're speakers. It's that bad. Uh, it's rattly as heck, the clarity is bad, zero bass and they don't get super loud, but they are there. So it's nicer to have it than it is to not have it. Now, as for ports, this went above and beyond what I expected, which is, it's, I mean, it's really impressive. One display port 1.4, I believe it's 1.4. They don't actually specify this. Two HDMI 2.0s, one USB type C with not only 90 Watts of charging, but it's a data connection and a data connection. One USB type B upstream, two USB type A downstreams, and then a three and a half millimeter audio out. Those are great ports. I mean, it's just it's just great ports. And remember, if you do want to hook up a console, this is HDMI 2.0, and that's okay because it's 1440p. This is not a 4K panel. The GP27U does have HDMI 2.1, and it is 4K, so that makes sense. All right, but let's talk about stand and build quality now. The bottom part of the stand is totally metal. It looks nice, it looks premium, it feels good, and it's overall stable. But the adjustment, it just feels a little bit more budget. It's definitely not on the level of LG, Dell, Alienware, Corsair. This definitely has a little bit more wiggly kind of stuff. Uh, it's not quite as premium, but as far as adjustability, it's quite good. It has height adjustability, tilt adjustability, swivel adjustability, and rotation, both 90 degrees vertical to the left and to the right. So that's great. I mean, overall, this is not a big deal because you're probably just gonna set it and forget it. However, this just, well, the user experience is not quite as good as Dell Alienware, LG, and Corsair. The build quality itself feels good, it's well built, but it just doesn't feel especially premium. Uh, this also has RGBs on the back side of it, which aren't too bright. They're not really worth it, I think, and they look kind of cheapy. They also cannot be controlled in the menu system. I believe you have to download the Cooler Master software to be able to change the RGB on the back. I think the only thing you can do is actually turn the RGB on and off, which was a big mistake. That's kind of dumb. The other thing I don't like is the actual stand that 
well, not the base of it, but this part of it uh, that holds it up, it's fairly thin. It's well made and it's all metal and stuff, but it's so thin that the cable management is hard to hide. The cable management works well and it's easy to get it into that little hook thing and, and all the cables stay together, but again, it's very hard to hide the cables around that thin post. All right, but price and value, probably the most important section of the video. So this thing comes in at $499.99, so basically 500 bucks. And I'm just gonna say it, it's so freaking worth it in every way possible. The brightness, local dimming, gaming performance, and then it's got insanely good ports for the price. Yeah, it's a freaking amazing deal. I mean, there's no two ways about this. So do I recommend this monitor? Absolutely. freaking lutely This is a freaking beast if you want fantastic contrast ratio and gaming performance without any worry of OLED burn-in. Again, if you wanna check it out, there are Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. What an awesome monitor. Cooler Master out here bringing it doing some unexpected stuff with the ghosting stuff. I'm absolutely loving it. It'll be interesting to see the 4K variant of this because, well, right now my feeling is it's probably not worth it. At this point in time, it's double, just about double the price of the 1440p one, and uh, I don't know if that's gonna be worth it. My feeling is that a 32 inch 4K variant of this panel that's priced at 1,000 or $1,100 would probably be insanely awesome, but a 27 inch 4K, double the price, yeah, I don't know. But I will be reviewing that one and we'll have to see, my mind might change. All right, this is Tyson Tiger Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.